Hello and welcome to Vox Terra. Maybe you follow that story, or I hope you follow the story about Facebook and that executive from Facebook who was working with computer algorithms and is now, is now on a speaking tour, if you will, exposing the Facebook algorithms for promoting what she's referring to as hate and also self-deprecating feelings among women, young girls in particular. So I want to help you focus on what I think is really important because there's going to be a lot of media hand-wringing and political hand-wringing about what should be done, what should be done. So I want to steer you back to some key points and key concepts. Well, biggest concept of all is this concept of surveillance capitalism. Now, I didn't make up the term surveillance capitalism, but I heard it quoted yet again on an interview about this Facebook story on Democracy Now! with a former Facebook investor who since has turned critic of Mark Zuckerberg, as well as somebody involved in, in media and pushing back against hate in the media. So surveillance capitalism is this reality that, that we are having, we as in the, anybody using the internet, anybody using a smartphone, and so many devices now, we are having our data gathered for the purposes of predictive and manipulative analytics. In other words, well, what is this user thinking? What is this user interested in? Let's show them more of that, and then let's steer them towards certain consumer or political choices, depending who the paid advertiser is. So a main theme here is that outrage and fear rank higher in people's clicking and interest level. They're what are called high engagement ranking. So then they self-reinforce. You're interested in a, a let's say the case of, of, the, of the girl or the woman concerned about her appearances. She, you know, this was the Instagram topic here. She's then being steered towards more clicks that are then going to move, move her towards more upsetness with her appearance, which then steer her in the direction of anorexia and more self-loathing. Now, the investor, the former Facebook investor, pointed out how Mark Zuckerberg claims that they don't want to have these hateful posts on, on their page, that many advertisers complain about them. But he claims this is disingenuous because many of the advertisers themselves, that is what they are promoting. Like, for instance, the Stop the Steal. They want to promote outrage and fear about a stolen election. So the thing reinforces that's a paid advertiser. Now, an example I would like to give is the paid advertisers of the oil and gas industry. What is their influence within Facebook algorithms? And the promoting of misinformation about climate science. Also, interestingly, came up the topic of Facebook hiring a firm to get you know, negative information about George Soros because George Soros was a critic of Facebook. And I noticed that many of the, the conspiracy-oriented articles I've seen friends post on Facebook often have George Soros at the center of it, a critic of Facebook. Now, the guests also claim that Facebook algorithms are even less well-monitored in outside of the English-speaking world and attributed... Facebook to the rise of Jair Bolsonaro in Brazil, who has been opening up the Amazon for further exploitation, drilling, lumber, that type of thing, resulting in the murder of indigenous who are standing in the way of that further exploitation of the Amazon. Now, regarding women and girls, the take-home message should be that if you are feeling bad about your appearance, you're just part of a bigger trend. Don't take it personally. It's not you. It's this larger trend you're feeding into. And a lot of it has to do with the social media like Instagram and Facebook, what is being presented to you, what you are, what you are beginning to self-reinforce by your clicks. Now, yes, body shaming and a certain appearance that I think is generally very unnatural, synthetic, if you will, being promoted to women has been around before Instagram and before Facebook. But the idea is that these algorithms, this ranking, search ranking is reinforcing that and making the situation worse, not better. So what we want to focus on here is the solution to these problems. It isn't you know, nebulous and something, some vague regulations that are going to create all kinds of unintended consequences. The solution is to go right at the heart of the beast, which is surveillance capitalism, which is data gathering, which is that there's too much data and information being gathered on us, and that's then being sold and used to for these predictive and manipulative analytics. So what we need is data privacy. 
At a minimum, we need data privacy. Other solutions, I believe, are a distraction or a bait and switch. And I say that because there are so many moneyed interests benefiting from the use of our data that the politicians, the media, they're going to want to take us in a different direction other than digital privacy. So just keep that thought fixed in your head. Digital privacy as a response to predictive, to surveillance capitalism, predictive and manipulative analytics. Well, I hope you found this video really helpful. And if you did, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. You've clicked that notification bell, you're liking. And until next time, peace be with you.